Well, I guess that takes us on to Smallville. Yep. Season 1, episode 9, it's called Rogue. What happened in this one again? <laughs> a crop caught from Metropolis catches oh, Clark. One, yeah. Catches Clark using his powers and he's like, I'm going to extort this little shit. It's always a good sign, isn't it? Um, so the last part is I watched that like three hours ago, maybe. <laughs> I think there's a couple of notable things in this episode. I want to talk about the armor plate from Alexander the Great with the snake that looks like an S. And then Clark's mm. like, I can't see myself wearing that into battle. Ha ha! Isn't that funny? I hit my mic. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, ha, ha. Uh, I, yes, yeah. One, one of the one of the worst of the, you know, oh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge moments, right? Mm. Although I actually have an even bigger problem with the line that comes up a little bit later in the scene. Go on. Clark, you know, he gets kind of awkward because Lana's there and Lex is doing his, like, ah, I invited you both. You've got to fight Whitney. He's your enemy, Clark. He's your enemy. It's like, yeah, you're not an evil mastermind, Lex. Sure you're not. You see, everybody is your enemy. You have to destroy him and take the girl. Do you know, I like this for Lex, not even as being evil, but just as a product of how he was brought up by his father. Everything's business. Everything's a threat. Oh, sure, sure. Threat but or an opportunity. Clark is outside, and we're in Metropolis for the first time in the show. He steps out this museum. It's the Lex Museum or whatever, or at least the museum's got a Lex event on and he walks outside of the steps and says welcome to metropolis and i'm like why would you be saying that now it's, it's not like you just uh, teleported into the building and then you've walked out and this is the first time you're seeing the city you 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 would have gotten here earlier in the evening maybe during the day you'd have gotten off the train or out of a car maybe <laughs> I, I i wonder if this is the first moment he's had alone like lex brought him here maybe He's been Maybe. mingling. This is the first time he stepped outside and wrong. had a moment to himself. I don't know. If something happened, like he saw someone, like... Get like, stabbed. Oh, no, he didn't intervene with that, but I'm thinking, like, maybe he would see a couple of things that are very city like Like, he'd see, like, a prostitute go by, and then he'd see, like, you know, someone be kind of shitty in litter or whatever, or, you know, or he'd see, like, an advert for something violent, whatever, something violent, I don't know. But he would see a couple of things and go, well, welcome to Metropolis. And then it would make sense in context, because it's like he's acknowledging the difference from his home. Yeah. But all he does is literally walk out onto the steps, he looks up at the, the building and goes, welcome to Metropolis. This is, it, this is before he sees the homeless guy, right? I think so, yeah. This is before the homeless guy. Yeah. Because, I mean, you know, the homeless guy is probably enough to have justified that. Yeah, that, that'll be a more of a city thing, but still, it's just... It's, yeah, but, but. and you got a crop cop, and I don't know if I love or hate the fact that the badges, the police badges, are the shape of the the emblem. I think I like it in a post Superman world because I like the idea that they've they've been inspired by him, that they've incorporated it kind of into their design. Having it be the 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 shape of his shield before Superman just feels really on the nose and like. See, I'd like it if. You know, if if he didn't get the S from Krypton, right? You know, like the idea that he took, you know, when he, if he was mm. designing it himself, and he was like, no, 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 okay, that they're law enforcement, I respect them, so I'm going to take part of that. Or if he took the shape symbol. from them, okay, that, that'd yeah. be an interesting twist on it. Uh, you know, it wouldn't be a traditional move, move for it, but I could respect that. But that's you know not what happens, obviously. The problem with that though is that then the S is actually just an S. It means he has to get the name before he picks the logo. Yeah, the S has to come from somewhere else. Yes, because it's not just a symbol of his, you know, House of L. It's not, you know, hope. Yeah, it, it's not all that. Yeah, it yeah. can't. You, you can't do both. Yeah. So I mean, eh. Uh, but hey, so it's not the worst offense, though, is it? What the badge? Yeah. No, it's, I mean, it's not, not the worst. It's just, it's just I saw it. and I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot they did this in this show, and I'm like, eh, it's, yes, whatever. Yeah. Um, there wasn't as much Lana stuff in this one, but the worst scene in the episode might be the Lana Chloe scene, where so Chloe gets taken off the paper because she keeps doing like exposés on weird alien shit, and you know Principal Quan is not having it, and Lana I'm goes. Not a lie, I'm on his side here, <laughs> and because he's like, oh, it should be school related things you're writing about, not conspiracy theories about you know aliens and meteor rock, but regardless. Lana goes to the principal to talk to him and try to like you know hey maybe you should reconsider this the paper's important blah blah blah. And basically he says to Lana, we don't see this scene, but this is what we hear about later. It's like basically he said, well, since you care so much, you can run it, right? And then Lana says, okay, I'll do that. And thinking, oh, I'll let Chloe basically still run it. I'll just kind of be, be the name. be the name uh, and get her back into it. Chloe's reaction to this is so unjustified. 
It makes no sense, does it? She just immediately starts crying and being like, Oh, I thought we were friends, Lana. You just wanted it for yourself. Chilling wasn't enough. And then the proper dick move is Clark's like, Hey, Chloe, maybe you're jumping the gun. Because she is jumping the gun. She's like, oh, oh, yeah, you're totally unbiased and everything related to Lana. I'm like, oh, that's not awkward, Chloe. Yeah. That, uh, that, ugh, ugh, yeah. Ugh. Uh, no, I'm with you. I'm like, <laughs> why are you getting this upset? I mean, I, 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 know, I understand you're upset, right? You know, this was your thing. And you feel like you've, it, you're, you're losing it. But you'd already lost it with or without Lana. Mm -hmm. That it was gone. This is this is better than nothing. This is you know it was gone and dead on your own fault because of what you did. And then she, as a friend, went and tried to get it back and went, oh, "I've got something." And even when Quan gives in later on, what he says makes a lot. He's like, "Don't print anything you can't prove." That is because even then it's like, yeah, if you want to t talk about meteor rocks and shit, do it, but only if you can prove it. If there's not proof, you don't print it. Yeah, also, pr yeah, that, that story that Lana writes is such bullshit. Quan, you know, censors free speech. No, he doesn't. He said it's a school paper, write about school things. <laughs> that's, that's within the edict of the job. That seems perfectly goddamn reasonable to me. This is pretty much... Uh, yo, this is verging on libel. <laughs> this is like you work at a sports magazine and your editor gets pissed because you did a movie review in your sports magazine. <laughs> yeah, not, not even a sports movie. Yeah, no, why, why did you read about Star Wars? We, we, we talk about basketball. Why did you read about Star Wars? You're trying to censor my free speech. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's, I don't think people understand what free speech is. <laughs> I just, this cracked me. I'm like, why is he, why is he reacting to this? Be like, fine, print your shit, I'll shut it down again. <laughs> why, why doesn't he just do that? Why does he give in? Because she puts this shitty article. She goes, oh, all right, fine, you win this one. Uh, why? Well, just go, right, fine, I'll take the paper away again. Forget it. Do you know, it's a shame my school never had a paper, because I'd have totally done the movie section. I'd have been that nerd. I'd have done it. You would have. Yeah. No, mine didn't either, but... Yeah. But, oh, my God, oh, this pissed me off, because it just made, it just made no sense. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, I mean, arguably we're debating here that there shouldn't be a... But, I mean, I could buy there being, like, a, a culture section where, you, you know, you have some reviews of movies sure, and stuff. But is that, is that front page news? No, it's not front page. Because it's front. This big meteor thing is front page to her. It's it's not an opinion piece buried in the paper. Which yeah, right, fair enough. No, no, this is front and center. Hmm. Um. Yeah. So yeah, oh, crop cop. That's what this is. <laughs> crop cop. Yeah. yeah so, he, he. Uh. Yeah. He comes right to see Clark. He's like. He, he, that's what I thought was funny. He drops the uh, this big generator on Clark in the barn. Yeah, which we had a convenient scene saying of how heavy it was, because Jonathan struggled with it, and then Clark yeah. lifted it nice and easy. It, well, which is fine. My problem with the scene was actually that when Clark, like, you know, was getting back up, he land, lands on top of him, Clark just throws it off and throws it over at the wall, destroying it, and I'm like, that's still your dad's generator, he still needs that. <laughs> why, why don't you just put it down gently? Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm like, man, Clark... Consider it. I mean, I know he loses his temper later and like breaks a beam, but that's like self that he's angry. He's not angry yet. I think he's just caught up in the moment. But, but I mean, I bet, well, he shouldn't be panicking because he doesn't know there's anyone there yet. He thinks it's just fallen, right? Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't he just pick it up? It's like he's hurt. He's fine. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. Anyway, so he, he tries to blackmail him. Clark tells the parents about it. Uh, he, he keeps like, you know, oh, you know, you do this. It'll be one time thing, Clark. So he, he goes with him in Metropolis. Uh, I, I will say I like the scene where Jonathan goes to meet him. Oh in, sure, in the coffee shop. Because and and he he's there like yeah I figured it'd be you that showed up because of course he was going to tell the parents right. It's classic Jonathan. I think Jonathan's characterization makes sense in this episode. There's, there's nothing I can fault with it. Um, it's basically yeah, you know, he, we've said before. Jonathan's probably the best part of the show, right? He he goes to he goes to him wanting to talk him out of it, but ultimately. When he gets there and the guy starts like you know saying the various things, he's like, "Well, I don't actually have a comeback for a lot of this." And then he loses his temper a bit because yeah. Jonathan has some anger problems. Yeah, and he you know he uses that expert. That's another good scene. As Clark goes to him, you know, because Jonathan, the the cop plants a body and frames Jonathan for a murder, um, and Jonathan's in prison. Clark goes to see him, and it, there is a point after he gets arrested where Clark like grabs the the cop and puts him up against the wall, and he's like really angry. And Jonathan gives him a good little speech. He's like, no, you can't get angry, son. Like, you know, I've got anger problems and I know that it's hard, but you can't. Like, you... You, you have to be better because 
you can hurt someone seriously. But, uh, yeah, not only can you hurt someone, but I, th- I think Jonathan's more worried about if you do this once, no one will ever not be scared of you. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's, again, it's, it's, it's just that, you know, the classic, you know, father, fathers wanting their sons to be better than them. Exactly, yeah. You know, classic stuff. So I, I can't fault the Jonathan side of things. But he go, after this, he goes, or before the, the, the body, because this, this happens because he, he doesn't do the job properly before, but he, he wants him to steal a stay from, because he's like, Clark, there's these bad guys, they're called internal affairs. And I'm like, yeah, sure, buddy. You're yeah, the bad guy. I'm gonna buy that. Yeah. Uh, oh, Clark's an idiot in this show. I don't see why not. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know that. So, so Clark goes up, gets this safe, but of course he tries to like get him in the ship by just throwing the safe out the building onto his car and then leaving as the cops show up. Um, yeah. But this doesn't work. So the big plan then is that he, he's like helping him again with this other job after his dad's been arrested. Uh, he's like, okay, you're going to help me steal that plate because there's like $10 million worth of jewels on it. So we're going to do that. So he's, he's using them to like break into a place. And he's like, and I, 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 the one little touch I liked was that, oh, he's like, is this, this fuse box thing alarmed? And he's like, no, the only alarm things they think someone can physically get into. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, yeah. that's a nice little touch. That makes sense. Right? Yeah. yeah. No, why, why would they alarm this? Like, um, so, you know, he, he rips off. I mean, I guess people could cut into it, but, I, I, you know, it's, it's properly welded shut. It is, yeah. It'd be, it'd be noticeable someone lugging welding gear up there. Yeah. Um, but hey, so... Yeah, he does it. Uh, but he, then he's like, he actually just throws the breastplate outside to where the, the guards are. Uh, and which and Lex. Way, yeah, Lex falls because Lex knows this cop. This cop used to like you know cover up things back in Metropolis when he lived there. The, co- the So he throws the thing out and what I thought was odd about this is Lex is, happens to be out there when this bomb threat because the, 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 the cops put in like a, a fake bomb scare to sort of distract the guards yeah. for some reason Lex is the one picking up the box like all the guards are standing behind Lex like Lex is the one in charge well yeah no I thought this was weird and I have put some thought into it because it was really weird it's really I, weird. I probably put way too much thought into it mm-hmm. here's my justification Lex is like you know what fuck it I don't think this is a bomb right <laughs> he's just going in for it and the guards are like, hey, hey, we, we shouldn't be touching this. We should be waiting for bomb disposal, right? Bomb squad coming. My, my only and guess like, was I, that... I don't, I don't want anything to do with this. My only guess was that Lex... I, I, either the Luthers owned this museum or they knew who he was. So they were you know, they were willing to take orders from him. But it felt like he was in charge in the scene. It was weird. It did, yeah. Uh, so yeah, as Clark just kind of throws the, the, the plate in the bag outside. It was really you know, with super strength, like out, 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 over the top of the window and out into the street. And it's like, oh, your fingerprints all over that plate. There's no way you're getting out of this now. Um, and this is when the, the cop makes the bizarrest choice to me. He's like, well, you're strong, but you're not bulletproof. And he pulls out a gun and I'm like, okay, I guess he's not been shot yet in the show. So he doesn't know he's not bulletproof. It's not like he would try and test that. Yeah, but I, I think it was really weird to me that you this cop the, the reason that you recruit him wasn't because he was strong it was because he was you know if the first thing you saw, he saw take a bus hit he dropped a generator he knows he's resilient not that he's strong i mean a bullet will hit him harder than a bus i mean sure but the bus didn't even leave a scrap the bus was in oh couldn't. that reminds me it was, it was a funny moment i liked in supergirl uh when when sam wakes up and she's like i feel like i've been hit by a bus and supergirl's like Sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny. Um, I'll give you that one. But I mean, I, I, I guess this was him realizing that he's, he's faster than a bullet because this is the first time he's been shot at. So and he has that moment where he, he looks at the bullet as it's going past and he's like, "Whoa, I'm this fast now." Yeah, I think it was a little weird where he go, he goes to one side and then he comes back to the other. I'm like, "Why did you come back across?" I mean, just because you could. But yeah, I think that's what it was. He was just trying to see if he could because I I thought. I mean, I'd forgotten, obviously I'd seen this years ago, but I thought he was going to get hit and realise, oh shit, I can take a bullet. <laughs> like, yeah, I've never tried. Late. Yeah. But instead he was like, no, I can move faster than a bullet. Oh. Um, Which is a nice moment, but... It's, it's yeah, fine. It's just the cop's open, logic right? was a bit weird, because he knew that he could take a bus, as you say. So it was a bit strange yeah. that he thought that this would... Like that, that bus crumpled when it hit him. So yeah, yeah. bullet, that'll be the trick, definitely. Uh, little hang So the big thing, of course, is that... Lex comes in, there's a shootout with the guards, the guy dies, obviously. And Lex, as the guy dies, like, what did you have on Clark? Tell me, you blackmailed him with something. Tell me what it is, I want to know. But he's just like, yeah. screw you, Lex, and he dies. Yeah, I, I like, you know, because I think the, the easy way is for him to tell him, just because, screw it, I, I, I don't owe Clark anything, right? You know, why but he not? also hates Lex, so it's still Just plays. because he hates Lex that much, he spites him, even in, you know, as he's dying. I, I kind of like that. 
and Lex, you know, has the security footage of just the blur moving yeah. past the camera. Right. On this... Why is there not a camera looking at the damn case where the goddamn expensive $10 million plate of armor was? Didn't, didn't they disable the cameras when they were on the roof? Did... I think so. I thought that was why they went up there. You know, alarms as well, but alarms and cameras... Because, you know, because yeah. said, okay, we dealt with the cameras, but they're still guards. Yes. This was a, a secret camera that was on a backup thing. Because they're, you know, they're not super speeding in there. They walk in. Even if there's not a camera directly on that, you know, on I, that I, specific thing, they had to walk to it. I can't explain. Also, Lex has got an old girlfriend around. Oh, yeah. yeah who's trying to take over his company. Some, you know, with a, not the worst ever British accent, but very stereotypical. It was a thing. I don't know. It was. It was next to meaningless, to be honest. Yeah, her 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 dad's got some other rich company that's she, a rival, and she, she's trying to take over. She's Lisa around. Carl. That's basically the, the point of the episode. She's around now, for at least for another episode or two. Yeah. So I had, uh, yeah. I mean, it wasn't the worst episode because, like you say, there was some actually good Jonathan scenes that were very kind of like, oh, this is okay. Here's here's a lesson, young Clark, that you need to know as someone who's going to become Superman. Oh, I actually, I laughed in the opening scene at the party. In the museum, because Clark's walking around and he's with like you know mostly adults, and I laugh because wait a minute, you look just as old as most of the people here. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. he had like a you know a suit jacket on because he's all, he's all dressed up for this thing, and I'm like, you look like you're thirty. <laughs> yeah, they get away with it a bit more in small where a lot of the adults are significantly older, right? Yes, like there you know there's a generational gap, and that's, he's that's, wearing that's, high school clothes. This was full of extras though that were like about the same age as him, but they were yeah, adults. Yeah. yeah, it was awkward. Yeah, it was, it was strange. But hey ho. Um, yeah, no, I, I like the Jonathan stuff. I hated the Lana Chloe stuff. Oh, despised it. Uh, a lot of the stuff with the, the cop was just kind of tedious to get through. Um, even Lex kind of chasing things down was mostly just kind of like how many kind of girlfriend was kind of just whatever. The, the stuff with the girlfriend was annoying. The stuff without was fine. It wasn't as good as some of the Lex stuff. No, the, the ending with them was fine, but everything building up to it was just kind of weird uh, and or dull. I, I like the scene where the cop came to him first. Obviously, he had the picture of them together, and he's like, no, don't know him. Sorry. Yeah, but of course you're going like, is that because he's protecting him, or is that just because he doesn't want, like, you know, he, he wants to figure out Clark, Clark for himself? I think I, I think it's more to distance him, because he knows this guy's going to get to him anyway, because mm. it's Smallville. You ask anyone, right? They go, oh, yeah, that's, that's the Kent kid. Yeah. But... So he knows that's going to happen. So I think it's more just so he doesn't implicate himself if Clark asks. It's like, hey, I didn't give you up. I just saw there's a list that they said to the MDB page. Yeah, you know, it gives like user lists to you know related to the thing you're looking at. Yeah. It says Smallville season one uh, rated, and it says eight point six out of ten. I call bullshit on that rating. <laughs> I call bullshit. Even even swapping those numbers to a six point eight is still far too high. <laughs> I'm not having that. <laughs> I, I, I might slide to a six at best overall once we get there, maybe. Uh, so, so far, I'm at like a nice smooth four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Four, four, maybe a 4.5. Maybe. <laughs> uh, but that is uh, that's Smallville. 